Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the Paul Weller Fan Podcast, and this is a very special one. It's Fat Pop Day for Paul Weller fans with the release of his 16th solo album, so what better way to celebrate than by getting a bunch of fans on the podcast to share their experiences with the album so far. This was recorded during a little lunch break on the day of release, and already we're seeing some of the reviews flooding in from fans, blogs, articles, interviews, Comments like masterful with flashes of magic. Like a shark, Weller moves forward on another album bursting with a lust for life. Weller journeys to the outer reaches of his mind on an experimental set of mostly three-minute pop tunes designed to stand alone as singles. As inspired and eclectic as ever, all short, all immediate, less than a year after On Sunset, packed with ideas and energy that surprise and delight. Fat Pop, Volume 1, out in the shops today, so let's celebrate by chatting to some of our favourite Paul Weller fans who are also fans of the podcast. Here's what happened. Basically, what we have here is a bunch of Weller super fans, I would say, um, to the point that people have artwork in the background. They've probably got every single version of vinyl, all of the colours. Uh, yeah, the seven-inch box set, the slip mat, the T-shirt, the lot. So we're going to dig into Fat Pop Volume 1 and your thoughts, team. I'm going to kick off with Peter Gordon, local broadcaster for the Paul Weller area, well-known in Guildford, Woking, Surrey. Sorry, guys, but he's met Paul Weller on many occasions. How many listens have we had so far this morning, PG? So I've done two full, and I'm about halfway through before I came on here uh, for the third time. Uh, yeah, initial reaction is, um, I can't believe this guy, actually, and the content that he is putting out now. It's extraordinary. I mean, I know everything's slightly further back, so obviously, you know, the recording was done, you know, last summer and stuff, and on on Sunset was with us then, and things like that. I can't believe, I just can't believe the, the product that he's putting out at the moment. I thought that, for me, the initial listens, he's almost triumphant now, at the moment, with his music, and the assurance around the way he is, and the different styles and the songs that he's getting out there, just listening right the way through it, every time, you just think, yeah, I mean, he's just completely in charge, completely in control, understands exactly what he's doing. And I think that even comes from, say, the artwork of, of the album. And I think it's a really funky uh, artwork. I love the fact that Volume 1 is in his handwriting at the bottom of the cover. Um, I love that those sort of little things he does. And you know, you know he's thought about that. And I think, you know, because that has been going on for, you know, 40 something years, isn't it? We, we know about that sort of stuff. Um, so the tracks for me, um, uh, I love Cosmic Fringes. I loved it when I first heard it. I still like it even more now. I think, you know, it's one of those wonderful Weller two-minute contributions to life which is just there. And I think it gets even even more sort of attitudinal the more you hear it. Shades of Blue, so pleased he got some good TV coverage on that mm-hmm. with Jonathan Ross the other weekend. I just thought it was great and seeing Leah on there as well. All the way through the album, it's, it's good fun. There's different styles. He still glides down the stream, which also, of course, has been heard before. But I think that song is just such an amazing song. It's got echoes a little bit of Shadow of the Sun at the end of Wildwood. Got a little bit of that about it. Uh, it's got a sort of hymn quality about it, you know, as in church hymns listened to it twice already and then actually i did go back and listen to it a third time before i started on the, the album for the third time so those are standout tracks for me at the moment there's more to come of course i can't believe the output this guy's coming up with now i think it's unbelievable and i think his legacy forever continues because uh people are going to look back on this stuff in years to come and go wow it's effortless isn't it what he, he, he you know you're not worried about that there's going to be oh what if it's not uh, as good as the last album it's every album he comes out you know my mates and that rib me because i'm so paul weller obsessed i'm mu- generally music obsessed as well but gen- but very paul weller obsessed is that they say you, you know that the standing joke with me is oh he, he could cover a nursery rhyme and you'd still would give it 10 out of 10 and five stars but Yes, I bloody would. That's going to be the next (laughs) album. Every album is just, you know, and I know it's an old cliche, but he's like a fine wine. It's just getting better and better and better. And it seems effortless. It almost feels that he just rocks up at Black Barn, gets his mates together, and they just deliver and it's just it's phenomenal and it you know it's such a buzz on Paul Weller album release day it's just such a buzz and you know I couldn't sleep last night and I, I, I refuse to listen to it you know I'm not an anti-Spotify but I refuse to listen to it until I've got the vinyl and I was lying in bed like one two in the morning thinking 
oh, what if it doesn't drop? What if I haven't got it? What if I haven't got it? I may have to go out early into the local record shop and pick up a copy just in case. But luckily, it all came. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, the, what, I should introduce you, the wise words of, of Tony Christmas, not only uh, intelligent, wise words from the man, but also the best surname of any anybody Thank on this, on this team. You know. <laughs> and, to, and today feels like Christmas, Tony Christmas, oh, right? doesn't it? it? You know, like yesterday, you're like a kid, a kid before Christmas, and it, it, it never differs with any album. And you just know the volume two's around the corner. You just know, don't you? Yeah, Peter. no, it's remarkable. Um, yeah. Peter, Peter, I'm going to cock up your surname. Peter Nagel, Nagel? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. You're always on the Twitter. You're always feeding back on the podcast. So thank you for listening. But clearly you, lo- you love a bit of Weller. Did it arrive through the letterbox? Were you camped out no. at a record shop this not, morning to take us not through? Not got it yet. Not no got way. It yet. It's not arrived. No. 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 The post lady, the post lady normally comes on a Friday about half past one. Oh, she may arrive during this call. Yeah. You, so, so you've had to dip into the devil that is Spotify. Yeah, but I, <laughs> but I had to. But I had to. <laughs> so because I knew I wouldn't be able to hear it. But yeah, if he was a professional footballer, he'd be player of the year because he just slams the ball in the back of the net every time. What Tony said, my wife said to me last night. I said I'm going to go on that. Um, they're doing a Zoom thing. And she went, oh, just tell him that he could sing a nur- like a nursery rhyme, poo poo yeah. wee wee, and you'd buy it. And I went, <laughs> I would, I would buy it, but you don't understand that you know he's just he's just class. He's just as a fan who who bought in the city as a thirteen year old, and then you go all the way, all this journey with him, and he's. I just think I I feel for the person that I really do love musically, I just feel quite lucky that he's. He's just putting out music like this all the time. Exactly. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Just brilliant. There was talk of this album and him initially, I read that he was thinking creating an album where every what he wanted was every song to sound like it could be a single. Um, and at one point, that was the idea that they were going to release every song as a single until somebody told Paul that actually, I think his management told him that singles don't really exist anymore. That's not really a thing. And it does sound like that. I mean, it's quick. I mean, Pete, you mentioned yeah. the fact that, you know, two and a half listens or whatever. It's like half an hour and we're done. But bang, yeah. every song sounds like, I mean, I was, I had one listen first thing and then I was, and then I had to sort the kids out and stuff. And already I was singing some of the words when I went back around to second song, second, second listen. That's, I mean, remarkable, isn't that? When I hear Testify, I'm just thinking, oh, crikey, I can't wait for the tour yeah. because that's going to end up one big jam on stage. And I hope he's got the flutes and Jack Ogan with the flute and everything because that'll be epic. Yeah, that's the one Andy Fairweather Low, right? So Amen Corner and the Low Riders and all that on, on them and, and real kind of. I heard it described as a jazzy strut, which I think sums it up. I love hearing Jack O'Peak on anything that Weller does, I have to say. Jordan Cartmel, um, another big fan, always on the Twitter, always supporting the podcast, bless you. Um, so take us through your discovery of the new album this morning. Um, what time did you get up? How did it arrive? I'm one of these people who is at midnight on Spotify. Um, <laughs> I justify that by saying that uh, I buy the vinyls and whatever. Still not arrived yet, by the way. Um, living up north, we get uh, sort of characters a pigeon up here so yeah i was i was one of those at uh, one minute past midnight re- refreshing refreshing and uh yeah so i'm probably on about half a dozen listens uh, so far so it's uh yeah and it's just the, the quantity of albums we've had over the past sort of six seven eight years you expect the quality to drop it yeah. just doesn't and you, you sit there and you listen to it and you're just like how does he do it <laughs> It's just incredible, absolutely incredible. And um, I, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this album. I really am. It's just really just, it, I, I tweeted first thing this morning. It just makes me smile. I mean, there's quite a few little deep songs in there. I don't know if anybody's like listened to the words Cobweb Connections, especially with, with it being Mental Health Week as well. It, that's really struck me, that song. i just, just blown away by it, just the sheer quality of it. Uh, Dan Spackman, how did you take us through your Hi. journey from this morning as well? Hi, mate. Take us through your journey this morning. Um, has it arrived? Have you got it in front of you? So a very similar story to Jordan, actually. Uh, a, mid- a midnight refresher um, <laughs> on, on, on Spotify uh, and awaiting my copy. Um, echoing what everyone else said, and I think we're probably all in the same boat. We're Weller fanatics, and people that are Weller fanatics do tend to to laugh when you talk about, oh, he, he's, his new album comes out and the first response is another one. And you think, yeah, another one. And don't worry about the quantity, it's the quality as well. And once again, he's 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 smashed it, hasn't he? It's punchy, it's quick, it's sharp, but every song takes you on a journey. Um, even if it's a short journey, it really does. And I don't think anyone's mentioned true yet, but I, 
I, I, I did like that. It came, it came early, but I loved the the duet being so. I don't know. It just it's not. It's like something I've not heard before, and I really enjoyed it. And that is a particularly short one. And I, it's I, like, yeah, I it's literally to... like two minutes long. That one, isn't it? It's, yeah. Um, and and this, I think it's Leah. Is it um, Leah Metcalf from the Mystery? Mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like really sunny, really soulful. Yeah, I really like that one. That's good. She's got a, she's got a great voice, and it worked. And, really and the well Stone Foundation well. horn section on that one too, isn't it? So yeah, it's yeah. And yeah. Uh, also, somebody else mentioned it. You're just now thinking, get that. Talk please get those dates coming sooner than there it just seemed to have dragged on forever and i was actually looking for my tickets that i purchased it feels like <laughs> five years ago and I've, I've definitely lost one of them because I've, I've booked booked three or four and um yeah i'm just looking forward to hearing some of this new stuff on on the tour there's going to be so much so much good stuff to play it's often difficult on first few listens to dig into the lyrics and um jordan you mentioned um, a couple there but a couple that really stood out to me the pleasure was one that kind of stood out to me which is obviously this reaction to black lives matter and these lyrics of look you know look beyond beyond differences see the connections all as one created no exceptions and it's kind of got a bit of a reggae feel that song to it a real kind of a dub beat to it it's it's beautiful but songs like failed and it, it feels like on this album again he's kind of concentrated on the lyrics i guess writing it in lockdown himself then sending bits to the other team it feels feels less like some of it's kind of you know he's talked in the past about kind of making up in the studio and almost like nonsense lyrics in a way it feels like these are really well crafted punchy songs that that have meaning david gordon you have paul weller in the background with you so nice to see paul weller with us what is that cardboard cutout (laughs) <laughs> As that was uh, so I, I got a lot of stick off my, my two boys who are like 18 and 21 about my, my obsession obsession with, with Paul yeah so they, they bought me that for uh, for Christmas yeah this year mainly to, to piss out me but they thought I would hate it but I absolutely love it so he follows me around the, he follows me around the house and he, he was desperate to be on to be on today I love it. Um, I love it. With a cardboard cut out of Paul Weller. Yeah. I need to get one of those. That's my Christmas present sorted. Right. Well, on that note, I just added as well that I really, one of the proudest moments of life was when, whenever the first, the tour that's now happening in November was originally planned, it feels like three years ago, but I think it was last, last May. Um, I was booked to go and uh, see Paul in, in Glasgow at the Barrowlands, which I believe is one of his, his favourite venues. And in fact, I'm told that he, he wrote uh, From the Floorboards Up, uh, yeah. partly about about the Barrowlands. And he's like, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sounds about right. I've been there many times, so that sounds right. Same here. Yeah. So uh, one of the proudest was like was for for that tour. I got um, talk my both my boys and my wife in the in the going to see him. Um, so it was meant to be a, a real a proper family night out. So I was really really proud that um, even though my boys take the say take the mic out of me, that they they have kind of grown to at least at least admire and respect them if not if not quite love them. My kids this morning I said, Oh it's, yeah, it's, it's finally here, it's fat pop day. What does that mean? I said it's the new <laughs> it's the new Paul Weller album. And they both went, Oh God no. <laughs> yeah, that's the reaction I had. I- <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> and appreciate it when they're older. They yeah, well, hopefully, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so, what did you make of the album, David? What what kind of stood out for you? What tracks are you, are you loving right now? This is obviously initial listens, but I have to confess, like my plan was to to get it on Apple Music at a minute past midnight, and I fell asleep at half eleven. And I have this, I was absolutely knackered, so I'm, I'm ashamed to be that. So, I did get up. Well, to me, after that, I got up at uh, I got up about half six, and. Uh, I, my wife thought I was a bit strange, so I had to get back in her, in her good books. Uh, I drove to, to Greg's, uh, which is about 15 minutes away, um, to buy her and me a breakfast in, in bed. But the real reason was so that I could start listening to the album in the in the car, because then we just <laughs> listen to it on the, on the phone, it's getting a proper, proper sound. Yeah. Well, or in a sausage roll. It doesn't yeah. get any yeah. better, does it? So the breakfast was great, but the album was even better. But the song stood out for me so far was called by Connections, or the kind of, that kind of folky feel, but the way it, then it, it built up and they added the kind of, um, the kind of you know, orchestration to it. So that way it kind of built up and, and changed direction. I loved it. It reminded me a wee bit with the on section of, was it Rockets? I think it was the last song on, yeah. on, on Sunset, which I absolutely loved. That, that kind of last minute of that was really kind of different, really kind of rousing. Now, um, I should introduce Trevor Neal, who's joined us, who you'll know from the podcast. Um, obviously, you'll know as a um, former employee of Knobs and Knockers, primarily, um, but also as one half of Trevor and Simon, the, the amazing comedy duo. And um, Trevor, thanks for joining us. Take me through your fat pop. You're on mute, by the way. Uh, take me through your fat pop journey. <laughs> There's always one. Take me through your fat pop journey from this morning. Sorry, by the way, I'm late. It took me three goes to get in, and then I couldn't get the video up. Now I'm on mute, and oh, I was what a nightmare. Still had to be me, didn't it? Yeah, no. I, well, I didn't get. To, I didn't. I didn't do it at midnight. I'm afraid. No, I, I downloaded it this morning. Um, 
and I had some chores to do in the garage actually. So I haven't done it. I haven't done it justice because I was listening to it on my phone in my back pocket while I was moving stuff around in the garage. So I can't wait to hear it properly. But I, I mean, God, it's amazing. Everyone's a banger. I think it's incredible. I don't know. He's amazing because it, I I get the feeling he's it's a bit like he was having a, some fun here in a way. It's like going through a kind of musical dressing up box, and he's like putting on a different hat and becoming a different character because there's so. I mean, every song's different, and you and the voice changes. The style change you've got i mean i really like that in a way it keeps it really fresh but you just get the feeling that he's just enjoying the songs because the songs are great but they go on on their own little journey so i mean you've got uh what, what was i mean like testify is kind of it's got that real sort of gil scott heron kind of vibe going on to it and 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 then you've got stuff like like true with with Leah, you know leah metcalf then you've got a kind of dirty kind of grungy kind of punk guitar going on there i mean it's just a different Every song takes you somewhere else, but it's it's good. I think there's there's. I mean, I haven't like I say, I've only apart from the three that came out pre-release. The others I've only been able to sort of hear once or twice this morning. But um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really enjoying it. And that's high praise if it's um, it's still sounding good from a muffled back pocket. Listen on your mobile phone. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologies for that. I can see. I can see Paul looking at me now behind David down there in the corner. I feel yeah. slightly embarrassed that I'm saying that in front of Paul himself. I didn't know he'd be here now. I wish I'd prepared. <laughs> I think there's a couple of things, Dan, as well. You know, uh, just really what, what Trevor was saying and around influences and things. You know, we all know that Paul is influenced by, by a whole range of different musicians, music styles, fashion styles as well. But, you know, and whilst you're listening to it today, you know the influences are there, but you couldn't absolutely hand on heart go, well, that song is that influence and that's so so broad is it now definitely some Bowie in there uh, amongst some other bits and pieces the other things around which which I, I just think are really really big today so you know here I, I'm in Guildford here uh, I've been lucky enough most of my life to be in and around Guildford so as a boy you know I used to walk into town and buy the records you know I bought the gift for example in 1982 in HMV in Guildford then I walked past HMV which has changed positions about three times since then in fairness but it's still there in Guildford right at the front of the shop fat pop is all over it. And that's just, you know, that's really exciting. And you think, you know, that is great. And I think the other thing, never underestimate, and I don't think any of us would, because I think we all know how important it is, but Black Barn. I've read a couple of other interviews with Paul today in various different publications. He talks about having that studio there during lockdown, the fact he can just walk in and do it when he likes. I don't think we should underestimate how important that whole comfort and feeling just at home which he mentions in some lyrics, of course, in this album, being at home has been for this particular release. I think it's massive. Mm -hmm. Well, talking of Black Barn, Ben Taylor, the magic mod, rock and roll's favourite magician, has joined us. Once again, we are in your bedroom, you magic mod. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, this, you were this there is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens, ladies. Uh, this, was, um, <laughs> this was last Friday. You were at Black Barn, is that right? Uh, Sunday. Yeah, right. Sunday. So, yeah, it was good, man. I mean, I... Uh, funny story, when he was recording it, I remember being in the studio when he was, I think he was Testify. He was like, they were practicing it and all that. And uh, at the time I thought, oh, if this is going to be mega, like I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing this. And then over a period of time, I managed to hear some more popping down and the buzz was unreal like I was getting I was really buzzing for this album to come out and uh, I managed to get a copy of it he gave me one on a Sunday and it's mate I couldn't wait to get home and just chuck it on and, and listen to it and I was blown away I just think it's a fantastic piece of work it's a, it's a masterpiece in music and I think it's a uh, it's just fantastic and it's I, I think I'll be listening to this in another 20 years time if I'm being totally honest with you and I think that's the sign of a great artist and a great album when you have a chat with Paul on Sunday so it's, and, and obviously you know you're, you're mates so I'm not going to draw you too much but um, he's obviously clearly really proud of what he's done here. Is he, Pete? You talked about the fact he's kind of, you know, it feels like he's just having fun here, right? And he's just kind of like trying everything, chucking loads of stuff at it, but in, with that confidence that he knows this is going to work. When I'm down there, we don't really talk too much about music, believe it or not. We always talk about other stuff, like the most random things about like maybe there was a new place opened up in Woking, like some new food gaff, and we were talking about that and what we were going to get off the menu and stuff. But there's a <laughs> spring in his step, honestly, it's just weird, mate, but there's a spring in his step. And when I'm watching him perform you just see like he's got a new lease of life and it, it is just so refreshing to see and i can't wait 
for people to listen to Sunset and uh, Fat Pop live. When it when when the gigs are happening, and I just think people are going to be blown away because he's got some real good surprises. Honestly, mate, I just can't wait for it. Well, I have to say, if you've not yet seen the the new trick that you play on Paul Weller, the new card trick, um, you can find it on yeah. social media. It was lovely that <laughs> he always enjoys watching my tricks, and that's the main thing. You know, when I pop down there, he's always like, "Have you got your playing cards?" Because if you ain't you're going home early. And I'm like, don't worry, I've got them, mate. Don't worry, I've got them. But as I said, you know, for me, it's still a dream come true because I'm like every, every other fan. And I think he knows that. I'm still I'm still like that young kid who had pictures of the jam on their wall. Uh, I'm 30 now, still young, you know. But it's it, it was always a dream for me to to meet the bloke and to, to sit next to him, have a curry, show him card tricks, talk about a new album. It's the stuff of dreams, mate. And I just think we've got a connection where we just hit it off from day one. He just loves loves what I do. He's yeah, he's very supportive in in the magic, and it's so I'm so grateful because I've always been a, an admirer of his work. So for for someone who I've idolised to to love what I do, mm. it's um it's a breath of fresh air, really, and it's something that I will treasure for the rest of my life. Yeah, I love the fact also that you make sure you get that album signed, don't you? So the so the super fan is always there. There's <laughs> you know always what? a little signature on it for your ones. As soon as he as soon as he gave me the album, I was already like getting it out of the plastic. I was like, oh yeah, let's have a little look inside. Oh look, it's a poster. Do you mind signing that, mate? <laughs> I said, I'm, this is, I said I've got a kid on the way. This is going straight on eBay. And he pissed himself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, every as I say, like I am, I'm always grateful for the little gifts he gives me. But um, whenever he gives me an album, I always have to get his sign because then I remember it's it's something that I will, if it makes sense, I will always remember it. Like I don't always, whenever I'm with him, I don't always say, oh, let's have a selfie, let's have this, because I'm not like that. And that would soon annoy people. But when it's a little gift like that, I, it's it's um it's something that I'm always going to remember. And this is going straight on the wall. Did, I'm not sure, did they all have a big poster with them? I've not yeah. opened mine. Mine's in the clink. Yeah. I've opened Did the they, CD. Oh, they good. Yeah. In the mirror. Yeah. In the oh, brilliant. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. It's a lovely poster in it. And that's, um, I've got to get a big frame because it's quite a big poster. And I haven't got enough room on this wall at the moment. So I'm thinking, what do I get rid of? Do I get rid of, I've got a picture of the Gallagher brothers. Have they stayed too long? Or is it the Happy Mondays? I'm not too sure yet. So <laughs> it's, it's decision Someone's time. Gonna go. It's going to be a well of shrine in here soon, mate. I tell you. <laughs> Um, right, let's move on to Sandy. Sandy McKinnon, um, where in the world are you? And talk me through uh, your journey to uh, the album. This originally morning. from well, originally from Largton Ayrshire, uh, now in Southampton, based in Southampton. Uh, I was up at a minute past midnight. I listened to most of it streaming, but I can't actually remember because I was so tired. So I was out walking this morning about eight o'clock, and I've listened to it a couple of times. I'm always one of these people who takes a good few listens and a good few, sometimes even a week to get into something really. But this one was immediate, I think. Most of it was really immediate. And I just can't believe 40 odd years on, it's still as good and it's, you know, better, just getting better. And it's different, it's fresh, uh, it always sounds interesting. Probably the one song that did it for me was yeah, was Glad Times. I think that was because the the Jules Holland showing from a couple of well that was almost six weeks ago as well it was the one that really did it for me yeah. really stuck in my mind that was a beautiful song and it's really really stuck for me and it, it grows on me every time as well so I can't wait to see him I've got tickets for Southampton later in the year in Portsmouth as well so I'm desperate to go desperate really desperate to go now after listening to this I always love um, looking at the reviews on, on their release because they kind of bring out these I was talking to Paul yeah. the other week yeah. they bring out these kind of posters with the five stars the four stars or whatever so let's have a look through some of them right Mojo Roll on volume two. Uh, Magic Mod, you're, you won't know this more than anybody. Has there been talk of volume two? Is he already working on new stuff? What's the deal? Any ideas? All I will say is he's the sort of artist who, as soon as something else comes, as soon as this comes out, I know he'll be working on something new. That's just mm-hmm. how, how he is. And and that is a skill on its own. I, I, I just can't wait to see what else he's got planned, mate, because this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, no, the rest of us will be resting on our laurels, right? <laughs> just be sitting back. Oh, I, I, want, I was once in the jam. It was lovely. I was a massive success. That's enough for me. Um, Uncut magazine, proof that music can act as a lifeline even in the most turbulent times. I love the fact that this was created in lockdown. This will always be there as a, as a memory of this kind of hideous 15 months or so. Um, classic pop. I didn't know this was an actual magazine. Classic pop magazine. Who knew? A breakbeat driven slab of fun-filled sunshine pop, which is a lovely quote. An NME. It does still exist. The album is a delight. A generous collection of expertly crafted pop tracks which I think sums it up beautifully. We are going to cross now to Aryan Schilt. 
who is a, a self-confessed mod and take me through your journey this morning of the album yeah well I was uh, totally uh, positively devastated I bought uh, the singles on record and I was like shit I can't just wait for uh, the full album to be uh, released and in the morning I just went to um, flashbacks in Islington and I'm just uh, north of Islington where I'm based and I was like blimey they don't have a copy yet <laughs> and they were like, yeah, yeah, we saw the hour in the morning. And I was like, what? <laughs> you saw the hour in the morning? And I was like, no, no, it's not, it's not going to work. And we're like, yeah, 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 we put you on a list. So I'm still um, just wow. working with the singles and with Spotify. And I just hate streaming music. There are many pop musicians and there is many rock and roll musicians, mm-hmm. but there's no one as true as Powella is. Yeah, he's the mold father. He's the gold father. But to me, he means so much more than only to be a mod father or a gold father. He, he saves me from the abyss every single day. And that is something I'm eternal grateful for. When I was seven, my sister, she's uh, quite a couple of years older than I am. We went into Sounds of the Universe and she asked me to, to, yeah, to randomly pick a best present for myself. And then this guy behind the counter had into tomorrow blasting out blasting out blasting out i was like shit (laughs) this is what music sounds like (laughs) this is just this is just what happens if you really believe in something this is pure modern and futuristic and this is what paul weller means to me today i'm 27 20 years on is one of the most brilliant artists of our time. There's a song on it, on a Fat Pop. He told us um, he recorded after the death of George Floyd. The Pleasure's the song, right? Yeah, it's great. I love it. That's one of my, I think that's my favorite on the album at the minute. Yeah, yeah, because it's full of warmth, it's full of respect, but it's still full of vision. And this is what we have to be about. If there's um, something I cannot stand as restriction and reactivation, what we need is constantly striving for words. And there's not that many artists to, as the Brit Awards just showed, it's just uh, full of hoax and sham. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair play. Um, I would love the fact that this could be somebody's first album. So the idea that Into Tomorrow and you just this kind of, because we all have to discover Weller from some point. For me, it was Aho, yeah. And it was, but for some of you, it'll be the Jam and the Style Council, obviously. Um, but the fact that F- Fat Pop for somebody this morning, this could be their very first Paul Weller album, and then suddenly you're like. <laughs> Oh shit, there's all this stuff from the last 43, 44 years or whatever it is. Is it no long? Yeah, 44 years since since in the city, isn't it? Jeez, um, yeah. All that stuff you're going to dive back into. Tony Christmas, next listen for you. Um, you're going to obviously dive back into the album straight after this call. But is there a track that you'll go straight back to, or are you going to play it from the start to finish? I believe that I bought everything that there was available vinyl, um, especially the 12 uh, inch box set, because I so wanted the Midsummer Music Live. I played that. I've been doing a little bit of work this morning, but I've had that playing. And someone mentioned on Sunset earlier, and we haven't seen it toured because of because of COVID and all the rest of it. And hearing that is just fantastic on beautiful vinyl. It was it was you know just talking about it now puts hairs on the back of my neck. It's such a that was such a great little gig, and to have it on vinyl is fantastic. So you've but, got okay. So take me through what you've got because there were multiple color versions of vinyl. So so what colors yeah, have you got? Well, I've got got I'm, I'm a bit obsessed with the vinyl thing as you probably know uh, with all my posts i've pretty much got everything uh well a jam style council since day dot i've got the seven inch box set i've got the 12 inch box set i've got red vinyl orange vinyl a slip mat a cassette <laughs> i swear the cd because i just don't do cds i don't i haven't done i haven't done cds for years and years <laughs> And although I'm, you know, people are talking about Spotify and I'm not anti it at all because, you know, I use it as a medium to establish new bands and then, you know, go listen to their music and buy their music. You know, last night, midnight, yes, I could have jumped on, but I'm like, nah, I've got to wait till the vinyl comes. So which one did you put on though? So that, so there's like five I'll, arriving. I just put the normal, I just put the normal. <laughs> no, oh, the normal black uh, vinyl, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the postman bought one. He bought one with a slip mat. He was quite early, so I was quite relieved. I thought, even if the other stuff doesn't come, I'm happy. And then I started getting the yodel messages. Everything else is on its way. So, yeah, I've had a fantastic morning. 
Nice, nice. So I've got this. I've got the CD box set. So what you were talking about? If you've got the CD box set, people, you get the second disc or the second vinyl is the Midsummer Music, which was the gig last year, which was yeah. on mm-hmm. Sunset, and a bunch of tracks from Fat Pop. You also get Fat Pop Bonus. Has anybody listened to Fat Pop Bonus yeah, yet? This one, I've, I've listened to the first side of it on vinyl, which some interesting tracks. Um, you know, I need to give it two, three more listens. Yeah. The B side is just one. I think it's just sort of one mashup, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's Fat Mix. It's called. Fat I was talking. To um, Steve Trigg from Stone Foundation for an episode that's coming out very soon, known as The General by Paul Weller. Um, and he was just told they just went in the studio and just messed about, and that became like this 20 minute song um, with everybody just chucking ideas and stuff. It sounds epic. It's, it's bizarre, but it is, it's, it's pretty bloody cool. Yeah. But so, yeah, so, so there's this whole kind of collection thing. I've got, I've also got here my one. I ordered the t shirt. Anyone else got the, t- the Fat Pop t shirt? Wow. Oh. Oh, call yourself fans. If they do 3XL, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Mod, I'm going to give that to you. You can get that signed for me when you next see the man, all right? <laughs> yeah, I reckon you can put it on and give us a little, uh, give us a little demonstration. Well, no, because I've, like. I've, got, I've got my Paul Oh, Wallace. gosh. Oh, my... <laughs> <laughs> My Paul Weller podcast T-shirt, yeah. <laughs> <Get on that. laughs> it's cool, right? Um, and I've got the yellow vinyl, and yeah, the seven-inch box sets arriving later. But I'm hoping to get to the post before my missus does, because there'll be questions. Um, Peter, I'm going to come to you, the man in the hat. This album, I know it's a bit early to say where it ranks in the that catalog, but 16th solo album. If you can put them in order from your point of view, from one to 16, I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Would you say that you have a favorite period of Paul Weller or is it impossible to say? To be honest, it depends what mood I'm in. So two or three days ago, I just pulled out um, Wildwood and put that on. And it, it just, it just brings, it brings back so many memories. You know, you just pull out one of those albums. Illuminate, I mean, one of my favorite albums is as is now. And I, I just couldn't believe when he'd like disband in the band because I remember being at um, the Olympia in Dublin and for two nights and they'd done, if you ever speak to Steve White, he still, I think he still says that's his favourite or the best that he'd ever played was the last night at the Olympia or the As Is Now tour. They were that tight. I mean, I think they did about two and a half hours. And then, and then he disbands it. And then, as we know then, Boom, 22 Dreams. Constantly pushing forward. Yeah. This album, it feels like there's probably more experimentation in this album than, than any other. But I, I do think he's always trying to, to try and experiment, try new things, push himself forward as much as he pushes the fans forward. And I think you know, there's always a risk maybe you leave some behind, but it feels like we're on this incredible journey. of, I mean, the, the sheer number of albums that have come out in the last five years alone is just incredible. And There's never a, like a As Is Now 2 or a On Sunset no. 2. It's, there's always something different listening to that album this morning the new one it just i just heard so many different things like fat pop you a bit of bowie i got it true i found it a little bit at the, at the start of it i found it was a bit lou reedish and stuff like that. It, just yeah amazing yeah. Do any of you get nervous? So I get nervous on that first play of the album because I'm kind of constantly waiting. This is the pessimist me. There's always a bit of me that's like, this is going to be the album that I don't like. This is going to be the album where I fall out of love with Weller. This is the one where it's, it doesn't do It's going to be me. the album that you made to go and see. I told you it was no good. Yeah, yeah, I told you it was crap. <laughs> but this is the one where I, I agree with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm always a bit like, oh God. And then the f- I don't, I'm not sure, I'm entirely sure I enjoy that first play of it all the way through. And then it's yeah, like, you're oh, almost, thank God. <laughs> you're almost r- rushing through it to, to make sure you like like it the first time yeah <laughs> um but yeah you absolutely don't need convincing you just you just need to listen to it and yeah two free listens and it's another winner hey look this has been so lovely to um to, to see all of you to talk about fat pop volume one the initial listens i'm going to go around the team i'm going to ask you two questions uh, one of which a quick review of fat pop from your first listen question number two you're allowed one paul weller song for the rest of your life it could be the jam the style council or solo which one's it going to be um dan i'm going to come to you first quick review of fat pop volume one what do you reckon punchy experimental please do some more <laughs> love it nice one <laughs> peter gordon a review triumphant and assured five stars nice i could see that on a poster as well actually we should make up if i if i had any design skills whatsoever i'd make up a poster after this but quite frankly i, I haven't and i'm too busy uh, jordan give me your review okay better and better peter your review a man who's in the groove and 
whose voice is just improving with age. Nice, nice. Uh, Trevor? Oh, uh, well, it, um, there's so much in this. If you can't find something you like in this album, then there's something wrong with you because there's something for everyone in this, I reckon. <laughs> Uh, the magic mod, Ben Taylor. Just keeps on getting better and better with age. Yeah. Pure magic. I don't know. Oh, pure magic. Pure, oh, you can see you're an entertainer, right? He's got the beer out already. It's only quarters of two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This is my fifth. I'm joking. <laughs> Sandy, let's have your review. Uplifting, very uplifting, and something to really listen to and get into, and especially in these difficult times as well. So, five stars, just keeps getting better. <laughs> nice, nice. Tony Christmas. Exactly what we needed at these difficult times. Absolutely five star, one mm. to 12 on the tracks. It's epic. It's epic. David Gordon, go on. Five stars and a brilliant showcase for, for Paul's. Like vast array of influences. Nice, nice. And Arjen? 10 out of 10. It's just what we all acquired him for. It's, um, he's still challenging him and um, us, and it's just full of uh, surprises. And these are surprises we all need because we all believe in music and in the strength of community and powerful believing of the futuresque and that's what Paul White is all about. Nice. I'm going to struggle to get that on the poster, but that was a lovely quote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So you allowed one Paul a song for the rest of your life. The Jam, the Star Council or Solo. Uh, Dan Spackman, which one's it going to be? Above the Clouds. Oh, I love that. Yes. Okay. Jordan? Harry Smash put the early version. Well, a singing French, you can't beat it. Uh, Tony, go on. Um, such a difficult question, but for me, English Rose. Oh. Yes, all right. I'll let you have that. Days of Speed version of your vinyl or the jam? Uh, no, all mod, all mod cons. Because uh, that was the first that, that was the first where I really established him. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. was it. Yeah. Peter Gordon and Ben Taylor, the magic mod are both nodding well, away. You've already asked me this one question for a podcast recording. I'm gonna change it now oh, because all right. it's different. Has my fire really gone out from Wildwood? which I think would fit nicely on this album right now, actually. Yeah, nice. Peter? I'd struggle to pick a favourite track off each album, to be honest, but um, I'm going to go like Wellerwood and go for one of the new ones. That pleasure. Yeah, I think that's, at the minute, that's the one I'm going to put straight on after this. Trevor? Uh, I've done this before, haven't I? I went for the jam one and um, down in the tube station, but um, me and my wife just love Happy Together from The Gift. It's a kind of really mm. soppy, romantic one that I think at the time he was... Maybe, I don't know, I remember reading he was a bit embarrassed about it or something, but it's a great song. I take it at face value. It's a really good sort of cheesy romantic song, but with fantastic brass and upbeat soul. I love it. So that's I'm taking that one with me today. Nice one. All right. Uh, David, go on. That's it, my team. That still gets played on the radio a heck of a lot. And it's one of those ones you go, I never go, oh, I'll turn it to a different channel. You're always like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll have this one. This is, it's like, a, it's like a comfort blanket, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah. Sandy, go on. Eating rifles. And especially after listening to David Cameron yesterday. So definitely eating rifles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not late. saying more about David Cameron. I'll be I'll be polite. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> uh, Magic mod, go on. You're on mute again. You're going to pick the one that you're doing bloody hand claps on, aren't you? No, 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 no. It, mate, my favourite was the question. I w- will apologise. I did fall down the stairs. I don't know if anyone saw that, but it <laughs> I didn't makes. See that. Uh, I didn't see honestly, that. I will, I, I will I, play that back. <laughs> and, and I thought, fuck. I, I hope no one saw that. But was the question favourite Weller tune for the rest of your life? Got and it's obviously always. Ghost, Ghost, 100% that. from this bad boy. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's you know no, everybody's yeah. nodding like they wish they could change their mind. It's, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, without waffling on, like someone just said, it's hard to pick. You know, he's brung so many fantastic songs. Like earlier on, like I was listening to The Gift and you think running on the spot, you think, oh my God, what a tune that is. And then I listen to something else. I think, no, maybe this is my favourite song. But it's always been Ghost because just the lyrics, when you listen to it, mm-hmm. it's just pure magic um and iron it's not really easy to pick one because they're all fucking great <laughs> i would probably opt for um shot to the top oh there it is yeah get on that yeah on vinyl tony you, are yeah. you, you looking at that with envy or have you got that one of your collection no, already I, I could do it, I could do it. <laughs> oh here we go he's got yeah. plenty of it yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got it in every colour under the rainbow <laughs> i want to show off i've got every single paulella on vinyl Jam, Style Council, Input. I've got everything. He stitched you up like a kipper there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the yellow vinyl. I don't even have a record player. Um, this has been so lovely. Record player. <laughs> 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 Ask your neighbour. 
I was I was tricked into thinking CD was the future and then tricked into thinking MP3 was the future instead of CD. Mm-hmm. So, hey, you lot, this has been so lovely. Thank you so much for your really time. Good. I really do appreciate Thank you. it. Happy Fat Pop Day, you lot. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. We well, all uh, love to well, uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, uh. <laughs> See you later.